We're gonna have a look at a few more exam style questions. Uh, this video's got the theme on arithmetic sequencing and geometric sequencing. So we're gonna have a first question, it's gonna be simple familiar. So we can have a look here, this question is simple familiar, it's tech free, it should take you roughly about four to five minutes. So pause it, put a stopwatch on and off you go. Okay, so we can see the solution there. We've got between the third term and the 15th term, there was 12 jumps with a difference of 36 numbers between each term. So the common difference being the same number that goes up at each time um, is three, right? So then you can just plug it in using the general term right here to find out what the first term is and that is this section here, the term of the function, which is that right there, and then to hence determine the eighth term. So we use this, what we got here, to then hence, hence determine that. Okay, so that is arithmetic sequencing, simple familiar. We're gonna have a look at some geometric sequencing, simple familiar questions. Okay, so here we can see it's another tech-free question of geometric sequencing, where we've got the first three terms, b minus one and then six and then b plus four, where b is an integer. This question should take you about six to eight minutes. So again, pause it, put a stopwatch on and off you go. Okay, so that's what we've done for the first part of the question. We've found the common ratio, right, which is just a term divided by its previous term. So we've got two expressions here with this is t2 divided by t1, this is t3 divided by t2, and we substitute them into each other to then find an expression, this guy here, in terms of b. Now we need to determine the possible values for b and r. So we're going to have a look at how we do that. To solve the quadratic that we got in part A, we can find solutions for R um, given the two different values we get for B. Now you can substitute these values here for B, these two here, back in to our first three terms there, just to verify for yourself if you like, and uh, you will see that the ratio um, is true. So I'm gonna move on to, we're gonna stay on this theme, geometric sequences are something more complex and familiar. All right, so again, with another tech-free question, this one should take you, again, roughly about six to eight minutes. So put a stopwatch on, pause it, off you go. The ball starts, we drop it from three meters high and then bounce four fifths of its height. In order to kind of construct a geometric sequence from this problem, I need to introduce some terms, right? So I've just said, let t of n, so whatever the term, the nth term, equal the height of the nth bounce. That means that the first bounce, I can work that out, if I dropped it from three meters, it's gonna bounce four fifths of that height. And to work that out, well, no calculator here, tech free. So I could evaluate just fractions. Okay, and so it's 12 fifths of a meter, right? Which is 2.4 meters high. Okay, so that's my first term there. I can work out the second term and the third term and so on, um, which I will do. Okay, so just so we can see what's happening here in black, I've got a common ratio of four fifths, right? And that was kind of given to us in the question. And it bounces four fifths of its original height, so that R, four fifths. So that means we can, we can make some deductions here. We can say 
therefore, well, we know t of 1 is equal to 12 fifths, and r is equal to 4 fifths. So we've got, we can find the general term uh, with arithmetic, uh, with geometric sequencing. First term multiplied by the ratio to the n minus 1 term. So in order to find here, looking at a for the fourth term, t of 4, we can just plug it in and evaluate it. Okay, so again, tech free, if, if you're struggling with the arithmetic, you just go over onto the side of the page and just go, well, I need to do 12 times 64 and do it old school. All right, and then you do five times, five times 75 and do it the old school way. Part B, it's saying find the sum of all the infinite heights. So if this ball was to bounce forever, what is the total accumulation of heights of the bounces? Right, and so this is, we're dealing with infinity here, right? We're saying the sum of the infinite bounces, and we know the sum of infinity is the first term over one minus r, that's my formula sheet. So we can plug away and solve this here. Okay, again, we're solving this without a calculator, so let's just be careful and not make any little silly mistakes. We know that this is going to be equal to 12 on 5 divided by 1 fifth. Okay, and this is just division of fractions, so I'm just going to write it out as division of fractions. And I'll cross multiply, I get 60 on 5, which is equal to 12 meters. So you might just say, uh, therefore, it bounces 12 meters. Therefore, so you might say something like, um, therefore, the infinite, um, the infinite sum of bounces is 12 meters. Okay, so we're going to have a look at another complex familiar style question, this time with arithmetic sequencing. Okay, so this time it is a tech active question, complex familiar. Now, it's not immediately obvious that you would use arithmetic sequencing here, okay, but this should take you again roughly about that six to eight, maybe. 10 minute range, okay, depending on how comfortable you are with uh, sequencing questions, okay, probably more around an 8 minute mark. Okay, so we get up to this point here, we can see we've got a common difference of 9 every time, and that's because when we're dealing with divisible numbers, it's just multiples, you just add 9, add 9, add 9, right? But we're subject to this constraint between 92 and 350. So I need to figure out, well, what is the highest multiple that's within this constraint? And so this is tech active. So the way I do this is I just take 350, I divide it by nine, I throw that in my calculator and I get like 38.8 something. Okay, and you can then make the deduction. You say, well, therefore the 38th multiple is the highest and you could work out that value then you go well 38 times by 9 that's equal to 342 okay so that means that you go up to 342 that's the last term there this guy here i'll just in green this is the 11th multiple of 9 and this is the 28th 38th multiple And we can see here that the 11th multiple is the first term, and then the 12th multiple would be the second term, and so on. So that means that when we get up to the 28th of the 38th multiple, it will be the 28th term. Okay, so that means that therefore, n is equal to 28. And we're finding the sum of these numbers. So from here, it's, it's pretty straightforward. This one is given to you on your formula sheet. Okay, well we know n is equal to 28, so we've just got a whole bunch of numbers to plug in here. Okay, so that means therefore the sum of the numbers that are divisible by 9 between 92 and 350 is the 
sum of them would be 4,774.